Hey you guys, today we're going to be going over five different variations of the pass and how to get into the move, you know, different ways to cover it. I'm not going to hide the move too much, the actual pass itself. These are just ways to get into the move. So we have our spectators card there. You casually throw the deck, blah, blah, blah. You can talk for however long you want. And when the time is right, do the pass to control it to the top. That's the throw angle jog pass. Let's learn how to do it. So this whole video is gonna go by pretty quickly. I don't wanna to be too repetitive or say stuff that you guys have already heard. So let's get into it. The throw jog pass, you have the spectator put their card in the middle of the deck and you throw the cards down with your wrists, not parallel, but just angled a touch. And when you throw the cards down, what's going to happen is this card is going to end up creating an angle jog for you. And it's hard to do it without actually doing it, but there it is. And where that card is, is where we need our break to be. So once we have that in position, we're just going to square it up and then we can hit the pass in whatever way your little heart desires. So again, you just angle that wrist down, that finger forward a little bit, pop that back end up, know what I mean? So we have the six of spades and when you throw the cards, that's there for as long as you need it to be there. Uh, so you don't have to worry too much. Have a, you're, you don't even need a pinky break in there. Just need to make sure you're trying to cover the front of the deck to some regard as much as possible. They're going to see this huge jet lag. And then you just pick up from that break, put your pinky in, do the pass that we've learned, and that's how you get to the top. That is the throw jog pass. Looks just like throwing cards on top of the pile. No big deal. So the next one. The next, next variation of the pass I'm going to teach you guys is the overhand shuffle jog pass where we have our spectator's card on top and in just shuffling the cards overhand uh, you can make it seem mixed. The card is lost. It's somewhere in the middle of the deck but when the time is right after relaxing, telling your story, keeping your hands in sight but just relaxed, when the time is right you can do the pass, control their card to the top. Let me teach you how to do that really quick. The overhand shuffle jog pass is cool because it just looks like you're sloppily mixing all these cards up and the whole time you got that same break that we had before allowing you to pick up where you left off and hit the pass to do it. And the way to go about doing it is the spectator puts their card on top of the deck, you turn the cards as such to do your overhand shuffle and you're just going to peel off the top card not straight over it, but you're going to peel it and angle it like that. So there's our break. And then just continue that peeling off motion with your thumb. And where that very bottom break is, right there, just barely, barely peeking out. Just below that card is our six of diamonds. So in fast pace, it just looks like uh, you can make it look as bad as you want it to, but you still have that break at the end and relax, feel down, feel where that break is, get your break, control it to the top. That is the overhand shuffle jog pass. Let's learn the next one. This has gotta be my personal favorite variation of the pass. It's called the fan jog pass. It's where the spectator takes their card and puts it into the middle of a fan that you've uh, allowed them to put anywhere they want. After you let them see it one more time, you push it in all the way, square it up, chit chat, chit chat, hey, who's that guy? He's looking at me funny, he looks over. You hit the pass, they don't know any different. So now you got it to the top. That's my favorite way of doing it. Let's learn the fan jog pass. So the fan jog method is my favorite method. The spectator has their card, they're looking at it. While they're looking at it, you do a fan. I have tutorials of how to do fans. But you do a fan, and you're going to pinch down. You're going to squeeze down, not too hard, but just enough. Like, if you squeeze, they are not going to be able to get their card lost in there. Uh, so you can have them put back, as long as you're squeezing the deck. They'll put it in. You allow them to... Look at it, that's kind of the excuse, trying to leave it out jog so they can look at it one more time, see where it is. And then allowing you to fake push the card in and then do the one-handed fan close 
that we've learned and as if the fan closes itself and we have our jogged card well that is actually our six of diamonds that's the card that we need so instead of prying it up we're actually going to push it down and that's going to make the top packet bow which will allow us to catch a break above their card so we can hit the pass and bring it to the top but this is probably my favorite way for sure because it just looks like they put it in you get, they get to see it one more time you push it in the card square up catch a break do it yeah and i also like the fact that you are coming when the decks close i don't like peeling the card up personally i like being able to go in to square the deck up and in doing so by bowing their card down you're allowing that top packet to push itself up so you can get a break and do your pass anyway so that's my favorite method that's why we're going over it a little longer because I don't know I like to pick favorites so Let's learn the next method. Another method to do the pass is called the turnover pass, pretty popular, where we have our spectator's card in the middle of the deck and then turning your hand over to scratch your wrist or whatever, just brush off the table, anything like that, we have controlled the card to the top. Let me teach you how to do that one really quick. The turnover pass is not one of my personal favorite methods, but it is still a method nonetheless. So we have our card in the middle and in squaring up the packet and turning the deck over to scratch your hands, you have brought it to the top. I don't think it's a particularly angle sensitive move, or it is rather an angle sensitive move. That's why I don't like pulling it off too much. But the way to go about it is, and it's good if people are looking right over your face as if the camera, you know, pretend your eyeballs with the camera. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad to just be able to turn the cards over, give them a spread, spring, anything like that, and control it to the top. The way to do it is it's all going on under the table, under your hands, your hands on the table. I'll leave the cards face up so you can see what's going on. You're doing the Herman pass with your hand covering the move uh, right over their eyes. So the Herman pass is going on and once it clears, instead of putting that packet on top, what you're doing is simply turning these cards over. And with the cover of your hand, it looks uh, almost as if nothing's really going on. And that's uh, doing it in a 360 motion, which we're gonna learn in a second, not too much of a difference. But your spectator's card, nonetheless, they put in the middle, let's say they're staring you down. You need to figure out a way to get it to the top and you don't feel comfortable doing the classic pass. You just square it up, turn the packet over. It's just supposed to look, you know, like you're turning the packet over. It's, so just, it's supposed to look like that. No biggie, should not have to stress too much over it. Six of spades, as if you're turning the packet over. Maybe give it a few riffles. Or better yet, let's say they take their card, they put it in the middle, and you just want to turn the deck over and spread through and show that all the cards are different. Well, in that little motion, you've controlled it to the top. So, pretty nifty way and it doesn't show any breaks. Easy. So, eight of spades, the excuse to turn the cards over, to spread through, to show that they're all different and leaves your hands clean, but in doing so, it's brought the card to the top. Let's learn the next variation. This is a different way to do the pass. It's with the deck actually being face up. If we have our spectator's card in the middle of the deck, you can visually let them see their card change or that card change into their card. Another version of the color change is having a spectator pick any card in the middle of the deck. Let's say they pick the Jack of Hearts and squaring it up and giving the deck a full 360, allowing that nine to change into whatever card they selected. That's the 360 color change pass. The color change pass is pretty self-explanatory, so I won't spend too much time on it, but you have their card in the middle, and all you're doing is doing the classic pass as fast as you can, and hoping uh, or relying on your skill that they don't see the change. So you can just practice it as such. And uh, But it's typically supposed to be done just doing the classic pass and trying to stay quiet. So their card is in the middle of the deck, and you can square it up, and you've made it change. 
and there are uh, probably better tutorials out there. I'm just trying to show you guys and open your mind to better methods. You can slide to the right as you do this move to you know, cover. A slight slip and slide to the right will cover any pass moving in the direction of the hands and that is a way to even color cover your color change any pass for that matter so there you go that is the color change pass the 360 color change pass is really cool it's actually one of my personal favorites to do when someone says hey do a magic trick and i don't really can't think on the spot this is one of my go-to because it's super fast and easy and visual and they can be right over you looking down so you want to get right up next to them or face to face chest to, not chest to chest but close to them so they can look straight down at the deck not off you know at an angle and you just spread through the deck and you tell them pick any card let's say they pick the king of spades and you can just square the deck turn it 360 degrees and it changes into the card that they want and the way to go about this it's the same similar exactly the same as the turnover pass essentially so they pick a card you're going as you push the cards back you're going to catch your break so you know where that card is and then you're going to do the turnover pass but instead you're going to go a full 360 degrees to reveal that card and that is the color change 360 pass just a quick ch -ch -ch. It's dope. Your right hand is covering everything. So I'd say practice this one and have fun with it. Here's the bonus variation of the pass. You just bring the cards, have your spectators say stop at some point. When they do say stop, you have them put their card in that spot. Continue to spring the cards and when the time is right, you can do the pass, control it to the top. For this card spring pass, everyone springs cards differently. This is the way I was taught. You have your middle and ring finger in one corner edge of the deck and your thumb in the opposing corner, allowing your index finger to bow the cards and you're just kind of releasing in a combination of pushing the cards and releasing your thumb and these fingers. You're just peeling. Up. It's more on your thumb, really. And so, in doing so, we have our card and the spectator tell me when to stop. Stop. You have them put their card in the middle, and it's very similar to the throwdown pass. You're trying to use this card to be our indicator card of where our ace of spades is. But you dribbled, so now you have to continue the spring. You have to continue the dribble. And in doing so, Boom, we've caught a break right above our ace of spades. But the cards look sloppy, giving you a reason to square up the deck, allowing you to pass the cards and maybe add a riffle, because you know we've heard that spring just a second ago, and we've controlled it to the top. So this is angling your hand or angling the cards. Find out what works for you. And either way, it can be pretty sloppy if you need it to. But it works in such a fast-paced motion that's just like, Tony, stop, put your card there. The cards are already sloppy. Make sure to square up this bottom packet. You can spring the cards more. Now you, they already saw you square up the bottom packet, so it makes sense to square up the top packet. And who knows from here, you might even want to just turn over the deck and go and execute the turnover pass. So... There's a lot of different variations to do this stuff. If you do the, the fan pass and you square it up, maybe you want to do the 360 spread the cards. Maybe you want to, in a way, execute the, uh, the Hoffman pass where you can control the cards by tapping them, <coughs> squaring them up on the table that we've learned in the past. These are all just kind of tough different techniques and methods to con keep the card controlled to get us prepared to hit the pass in whatever method that you see fit when the time calls for it. Just gives you a little breathing room when you have those spectators who are bearing down on you. You can just relax. You can just chill for as long as you need to. And as soon as they look up and away from the deck, 
hit the pass and you can control their card to the top when the time is right, when it's quiet, or when it, they're talking or whatever, but just can be quiet. And you've got to the top without them knowing. Or you can do it blatantly, as we've learned with the uh, the turnover pass. It's just squaring it up, spread through. All the cards are different. All right, now let's uh, let's take look. Cards not on top, right? Well, let's take it, change it. Well, there's a ton of different stuff you guys can do. I'm just trying to get you used to different methods and variations of it. So I hope you enjoyed all of that fun stuff. The deck I was using is the Bicycle Ghost deck. You can get that off of illusionist.com. I believe if you want to get that deck, it's pretty cool. And you know, that's just a couple different methods to control a card in a way. And that's really what this video is more about. It's methods to control a card. We just happen to utilize the pass. You can, I easily do the same moves, the whole throw down thing, and if you're not used to the pass yet, you can still catch a break and you can do some kind of cutting variation to get the card you need to the top of the deck or to the bottom of the deck. You never know. And so it's totally up to you. Same with the, the overhead, the overhand jog pass. So we have, we have the jack of hearts. We can shuffle these cards and then we can mix them and cut them even more if we so desire and in doing so we controlled it to the top so you don't need to do the pass this was just you know we're learning the pass this month so this is more methods to control a card and that's about it that's about all i got for you on this video my name is jerk 120 teaching you powerful magic integrate with social dynamics teaching you how to be a magician hope you guys are still enjoying and keeping strong on this past series, please subscribe to How to Disturb Reality and give this video a like and thumbs up. Help support the channel and keep uh, keep it going strong. If you want to support the channel personally, you can go to prowrestlingtees.com slash jerick120. There's a Disturb Reality store going on there and you can get the Disturb Reality t-shirts for a discounted price of just 20 bucks. I sell them personally for $30 plus shipping and handling the new ones. But if you want to get either the Love and Sex and Magic t-shirt, or if you want to get uh, the original yellow on black Disturbed Reality Rise Above shirt, you can get it there. And there's uh, some modifications to the new Skull and Crown shirt there that you can also get for $20. So, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Jerick120. Link's in the description. Check out the Facebook. Follow me personally at Jerick120 on Instagram and Twitter. Be inspired to learn, aspire to disturb, and always rise above. These hands are lifting it up. My thumb is over it. These fingers come to the corner. Pop that up, square it up. These fingers are curling underneath, allowing the bottom to come to the top. There's a break above the card 